be? I uh, hope so. Re referring to uh, Eddie Jackson at the beginning of the song, I, I wonder whether Eddie Jackson would have known that that was his song. Uh, what was your feelings about it? I don't know whether you felt whether it was wonderful or whether you had any kind of uncertainty about how it would, how it would come across. Uh, you know, I, I when I heard about it, I was excited about it, um, and of course concerned that it would be done well and 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 enhance the film. Uh, and so when we first uh, met with Robert Newman, who was uh, you know uh, heading up the 3D conversion, uh, you know right away we understood that his intention for the film was was going to be a spectacular and and I think. Uh, no, for you, Lella, you, you've raided the archives here in Disney for both Cinderella and Lady and the Tramp restorations. For this, I'm guessing it was quite a bit easier. I'm sure there was a, quite a, a, a hefty amount of artwork to be able to, uh, to work with. Well, there was, but, you know, for this, they actually came to look at the final color but didn't require as much, of, m as much time here because they had Lion King on the computer, the cap system, and so they were able to pull out the images that they needed from that. So mainly we were used as color reference comparison kind of thing. I was thinking, Robert, it's 17 years for you since the, the film came out and it became pretty much the jewel in the crown for Disney's second coming. It was the sort of pinnacle of that great run they had in the, in the 80s into the, into the beginning of the 90s. I don't know if you even had an inkling then, given the huge success of the movie, that 17 years later you'd still be on a victory lap, whether you'd <laughs> that you'd still have to IMAX and to Broadway, you'd always possibly have to uh, address this movie. I couldn't have imagined in my wildest dreams I actually, that was the thing, is that we were the last, as you said, or, you know, sort of last in the run, mm -hmm. uh, but we had uh, Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, and Aladdin to come before us, and so we felt, uh, you know, extremely competitive, and we, we, we were concerned from, you know, very the very beginning of the project that, you know, it wasn't going to measure up, so we, we put everything we had into it. I was thinking too, Disney must be tempted to get you just to record an intro for the 50th anniversary and the 100th anniversary. Just do a <laughs> bunch of them, just so we have it on tape, so we can just throw you in there at the beginning of all these editions. Exactly. <laughs> and also, we'll put a little graying yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Also, for the for the 3D, I'm hoping all the subliminal messages come out better in 3D, right? I couldn't spot them last night. Well, I think <laughs> many of them have been removed, as far as I can tell. <laughs> it's the it's the it's the 33rd biggest grossing movie of all time. It's got a 753.8 million. 92% on, on Rotten Tomatoes, one of those movies that's pretty much untouchable. And it is a hard act to follow as, as, as the two kind of previous Lion King kind of uh, sequels show, the sequel and the prequel. Do you feel it's, it's one of those sort of movies that, that is in your own career and probably in Disney's kind of history, it's just one of those moments that uh, is hard to repeat or hard to get that kind of impact? You know, uh, uh, when, when we were making the movie, this is actually a true story, I went out with a bunch of Disney people from uh, the development department and played golf uh, at a local you know, golf course, and I actually hit a hole in one. Ooh. And I thought, how many times is that going to happen? And I haven't done it again. So <laughs> we'll have to get Rory, we'll have to get Rory McElroy involved in the animation <laughs> just for the next movie. <laughs> just he can do a little bit of drawing, anything, just to get that touch. <laughs> uh, it, it's also the the, the highest-grossing uh, 2D movie of all time. And I don't know when it comes to the 3D world. It's been around since the 1920s and 30s. It was brought out in the 50s in a way, way of combating television. Now it's kind of combating the internet. Th there are those arguments about whether it's really artistically a strong tool or whether sometimes it's, it's just a great tool to get people back in the cinemas. Do you have a kind of, I don't know if you have strong feelings about 3D or you, uh, uh, do you feel that there are times when it's unnecessary? Uh, and you know, I, I think that you'd have to judge it on a case-by-case -case basis. When I saw mm -hmm. Avatar in 3D, I was blown away. I thought it was the most incredible, you know, incredible thing. Uh, so I think, you know, for certain circumstances, I think it makes absolutely great sense and not necessarily for everything. Uh, but I'm very pleased to say that when I uh, when I saw the film uh, last night the, in 3D, I was quite quite pleased and gratified that that it worked quite well, and in fact I feel you know delivered in many ways on some of the intentions that we had as filmmakers trying to create the illusion of 3D. In the Wildebeest Stampede, for example, I think you get a much better sense of the the, the dynamic of it, and it really doesn't look like it's uh, arbitrary. It really feels like it's it's part of uh, the design. And you do know that the desire to sing The Lion Sleeps Tonight is never more than a whim away? <laughs> Just a way. Something you can kind of work I've never on. never heard that I'll note. have to do the timing a little bit better on that. But, <laughs> but I know for, for you, Rob, you started in, in with Disney. You, were, you worked as character animation and, uh, on Little Mermaid, and it was in between stuff on, on The Black Cauldron. And you've been through their golden, golden sort of rebirth, I'd say, that second coming. I don't know if you feel now that John Lasseter is there, and, and, and movies like Bolt and, and, and uh, Louis and Tangled are, are certainly wonderful movies, but there's a sense that you kind of feel, well, Disney are kind of back on the horse, they're, they're having a, a third coming. Uh, well, I think that absolutely Pixar has been an incredible, you know, incredible phenomenon in the film business on many levels. 
uh, John has been incredibly successful, and I think uh, I think uh, with more more exciting projects, films to come. And for you, Lella, every, there's so many people who work down in the engine rooms in, in Disney, and there's there's always that. I'm guessing a secret desire to to make your own classic. I don't know whether you've had that sort of being surrounded by so much great work and so many great films. Whether you've ever harbored a, a secret desire to make a film yourself? <laughs> no, but what we do get to do is we get to travel the art to museums and across the world. Right now we have a big show in Korea. And um, that's our way of sharing the artistry behind a film. And I think it's, it's been extremely exciting for us to have people starting to realize that this is fine art. And uh, the exhibitions have been doing really well and they're very popular. They expect 300,000 people in Korea to see the Dreams Come True exhibit. So that's, that's my... Uh, that's my good one. <laughs> well, I should say the last thing for you, Rob, is just the uh, the fact that that you know you are that this wonderful movie is the biggest grossing you know, 2D animated movie of all time in, in the U.S. and you've moved into other areas. You did you know the, the Haunted House, Forbidden Kingdom. You've got Fly Paper coming around. You've also got I think some animation. Jude as a, a an untitled Christmas project, and you got Mr. Uh, Peabody and Sherman. Do you feel there's a, a great kind of debate still to be had between? digital and, and, and hand drawn. We look at people like Miyazaki doing a wonderful job. Disney have come back to it with the Princess and the Frog. Do you think it's just really, as Lassa said, all about the story or whether you think there are kind of a, um, a, a slight sort of battle for audiences? Uh, you know, I, th I think it, it, it's always about the story and it's always about why do it. You know, why do it in animation is a question we'd always ask ourselves. So why do it in 2D or 3D, I think, uh, is, is the same thing. Um, but I think ultimately it's up to audiences. When three 2D films come out, if there are audiences that love them and want to see more of them, they need to go buy tickets and go to the theater because that's the only thing or the best thing uh, to do to inspire more more films to be made. Rock and roll. I'll be giving the friendly finger. Nice to talk to you both. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well done again. <laughs> Cheers.